waiting for the race. The engine revs rise. The TT is underway. And look at that terrible start there for Bill Shepard. And also a very poor start in the middle as well. But up front, it's a very, very good start for Sean Lynn. He's taken the advantage in the number 13 car from the middle of the front row. And for Shepard, it really didn't work getting off the line. But there's a battle going on immediately between the two Cobras side by side as they head and of course they've got to watch out for the grip levels because nobody quite knows what they've got now. No, no one knows what to expect when that was disaster. Looks like Shepard got away initially. Oh, oh, we've got a spinner. That's the number three. Adrian Wilmot. That's the car he's going to share with Andrew Jordan. Oh, what a shame because that could have been a real front runner there. So up front, it's Marino Franchitti. Marino Franchitti in the number one car that he shares with Oliver Bryant. And this is the section that we've been told could be even wetter. Yeah, it looked like from our camera angle there, and it does look like it is raining more and more down as they're heading up to Levant Corner. Now wipers are going, but yeah, back to Bill. Just looked like he got it going and then had to dip the clutch again because he probably nearly stalled. So we're now on board with Fred Waitman in the Lister Jack. And look, they're always constantly making adjustments on the wheel, but now in these slippery conditions, it's even more of a workout. Yeah, we're going to get some great views, and they're going to be, have to be so much smoother on the front. He wasn't even fully flat out when he changed up on a straight, because there's a kink on it. Normally, you'd be flat out immediately, but they are being a bit cautious, understandably. Yeah, and that is expected. You see the wipers are good too, but Marino Franchitti, he has got a great start from that second row of the grid as he dives onto the brakes now into the chicane. And see, even there, just fighting with the wheel, desperately trying to find some grip. We then behind have Sean. Lynn in the other AC Cobra as well as everyone's filtering through and now we're on board with Karun coming down the main straight. Yeah, I wonder how Karun's coping with it in these difficult conditions and it was Bobby Verdon Rowe who made a, a really poor start sadly, he's just been passed there uh, oh and there again, the bitzerini has gone off again unfortunately Adrian Wilmot, I think that's a separate one unless he was just coming back on there um, let's have a look here so Adrian Wilmot, he had that slide and whether he had another little off, yes, I think that was a separate one. Yeah, that looks a little bit further down the road through the gravel, just about gets it stopped because obviously the grass is going to be wet now. But further back down the field, or further up the field from there, there's lots of dicing going on. There is. I'll tell you what, also, the uh, Alex Buncombe Jack Tetley car has gone well. Jack Tetley into third position as we look down the list. Uh, and Fred Wegman, we've got that onboard camera. That's the number 17, Lister Jag. And that's the car he's going to be sharing with Tom Christensen. So if Fred can keep it up there in the towards the front, that could be pretty exciting when uh, Tom gets in the car. Oh, a little touch. And off the road goes the number 48 of Karun. We're on board with Karun. Poor Karun. Going into Levant. Keeps oh. going wrong for him. Oh, when is, this, when is he going to get some luck as he's sliding all on the grass? He's going to have to take it steady. It's obviously very slippy. He bleeds back nicely on the track. But just like he was on the outside, Side there. I'm not sure which car that was. Clearly, they didn't see him on the left-hand side from their point of view. So we'll have a little look. So we're, great, we get to see it on board from there. Is the number 23? Is it just on the yeah. right-hand side there? That is the AC Cobra of Joe Twyman. But there, there's someone else. There's someone else there on the right-hand side of Karun who just clearly doesn't see him. I'm guessing, and just they runs him out of road, and he had to take avoiding action and forced off the, onto the grass. Yeah, so that's a great shame for Karun Chandok, who's therefore lost a great number of places. Richard Atwood towards the back in the number 80 car there. As we've got some other battles, the TBR going around the outside, trying to battle with the AC Cobra. So Mike Michael Whitaker in the TBR, he's quite enjoying himself. One of the Stingrays running quite wide. That's the car of uh, Nick Jarvis and Benoit Truille. I was told that Truille would be starting in it, and I think he might be. He's making up a bit of ground uh, in this race as we get it underway. Up front, it is still Marino Franchini who made that excellent start. And the pole position car is trying to force its way up. Number 47, Bill Shepard has definitely lost quite a few places, but is now in that group that we were just watching there as they try and make it up. Actually, second place, it is, in fact, the, uh, the Richard Kent car, isn't it? Yeah, the E-Type. Yeah, it come from 12th on the grid, and just a minute ago, that has now been taken by the Bonro, the, the Cobra 
car further down in 17th, but he had just set the fastest first sector overall, so got an 11 second gap to try and close down to Frankiti in front, but they are trading purple sectors at the moment. I tell you what, this is a good position for the Frank Kitty and Ollie Bryant team because Ollie will be very quick as well when he takes over the car. It's a great combination. Richard Kent's done fantastically well, as you say, to move up from 12th on the grid to run into second position now. You're watching currently the number, the battle for third. That's what you're looking at. This is the close battle for third position. And it does look an opportunity here for Fred Wakeman to take third, but now under pressure from Sean Lynn. Sean Lynn, who started from the front row, the middle of the front row, he's now moved up into third position and also trying to come through is Bill Shepard in the uh, AC Cobra that was on pole so now they're beginning to find where is their grip where they can attack yeah Shepard's made a very good recovery he said Sean Ling got round the outside going into the first corner but you can see the car moving to try and find any piece of grip out on the circuit and I'm, I'm guessing the rain has eased looking out of the commentary box window so there's a lot of cars on track and you see here the blipping to try and go down gears between the two St Mary's corners got still 27 cars running and Ben Watrouille as I mentioned he's made up a lot of ground you can just see in the background in the blue and white Corvette Stingray it's quite a distinctive looking car Bobby Verdon Row there in the number 94 that's a distinctive livery on the front of his car as well and he's made up a decent amount of ground as the uh, snake eyes uh, car as they call it but he had a terrible terrible start which is very unusual for bobby there must have been a mechanical problem i'm sure he's such an experienced racer but we still got these great tussles going on there was a little bit of barging yes going on there mike whitaker coming down the inside of Bobby Varden Row. That was a little bit too tight, wasn't it? That was a bit too tight. Uh, so Arjun Bardi going on, a bit of robbing of doors and mirrors, but as you said, Vernon Row didn't get the best of starts. So quite a few of them that didn't get the ideal starts, Ben, have made pretty decent recoveries. Now the gap uh, that Frank Kitty uh, had, it's come down just a little bit, it's still a big gap, 6.9 seconds, but Richard Kent's just done a very good lap. Uh, nearly two, still over two seconds faster than the race leader. So that's come down a little bit. Meanwhile, here comes the car that was on pole position. It will be taken over by Roman Dumas, the Shepherd family car. It is trying to work its way up into fourth place now, fighting away with <laughs> this uh, Fred Wakeman in this beautiful Lister. Can he find a way through? Not just yet. Coming down towards Levant, this is the area where we've seen a few slips and slides, but Benoit Trelouille is at the back of that little group now in the Stingray, and uh, these conditions seem to be suiting it pretty effectively. Uh, Fred Wakeman in that uh, very original Frank Costin design. Lister Jaguar, you're looking from the back of it now, which has got more power on the straight. Yeah, it certainly has. The intimidating eyes there of the Lister Jaguar really sorry not the lister that is of the ac cobra it's the the jag that it's chasing down very intimidating eyes trying to have a little look down the inside that's going to be brave in the slipping conditions of woodcut no not just quite yet but the issue as you say is benoit is hunting these down he is sneaking up onto the back of these pairs very quickly you can see in the background there using all the road on the exit of the chicane yeah, so that's a good part of it. Up front, by the way, the gap has remained a bit more similar this time. There's still a better lap by Richard Kent, but uh, this time Marino Franchitti responded to that and did a very similar lap time as we focus on the battle between these two. It's very close indeed. And he's Shepherd, got through. Yeah, he's yeah. Got a lovely move. Yeah. He has got through. So now Sykes will be set. He'll know he'll be super, super frustrated that he lost the lead at the start of the race. So there we go. Brave stuff. Diving down the inside into turn one. It actually flicking up some dirt on the inside there. But very nice and respectful racing between these two. So Shepard will be now eyes forward and actually has already started to catch another fellow Cobra of Sean Lynn in front. Yeah, it's getting tight, isn't it? In number eight car there, that's one of the more unusual ones. That's the Sunbeam Tiger Le Mans Coupe. They only built uh, about three of them back in the 1960s. And uh, they had victories in some events. Didn't quite work out for them at Le Mans with that car. But it's a very pretty little car just coming through that, that group at the moment. That group at the moment, led by the 23 car, the Ed Jones, Joe Twyman, AC Cobra, that one there. 
but they're all fighting for positions. Remember, uh, there will be pit stops coming up in a while, but we're a little way off that just yet. It's still about the first part of this race, where the first drivers are delivering what they can. Oh, and there's that was to Bobby Burton Rowe getting back past Mike Whitaker. The two have been fighting hard for several laps, and we saw the contact between them. That was another good move. Yeah, that was a great move, but actually the fastest car out on circuit, or has been out on circuit at the moment, is the, the Wilmot car down in 27th that we saw, the number three car that had been spinning off, but that lap, that, that fastest lap that was being held by by Wilmot's just been taken off him by the Shepherd car that is quickly catching up with the Lynn car, which is sitting in third place. So it's still Marino Franchitti who's leading this race with a gap of 7.4 seconds. That's the moment I just uh, saw a moment ago with Bobby, Bobby Verdon Rowe sneaking through. You don't often see many passes there, but it was well done by both. They gave each other room and it was clean enough, although he's now trying to get past another car. This is the battle for ninth place as he tries to get past Jack Tetley, but he's still got uh, he's still got Whitaker right behind, so he can't make too many mistakes here. Yeah, and further up, so Shepard has now caught Lynn. He's going to try and squeeze, and this is coming down into Woodcock Corner, who's later on the brakes, but he's gone slightly wide. No, he's done it. Another great move by Shepard. And sometimes when drivers get a little bit angry, but they just suddenly find this internal speed from somewhere. Of course, it's always been there, but it just takes that emotion to really find it. And already hunting down now Kent. Over a 10 second gap though to the Ken car in second place, but posting some lap times, even though they're overtaking it, is that uh, Shepard and Dumas car. So looking very racy. It is looking racy, and of course, with the track drying up and they're putting in some pretty good lap times now. In the qualifying, they were doing 124s and they're already down to 126, and it was Marino Franchitti, the race leader who have set a new fastest lap just now. So it's telling us that the track, well, certainly online, is pretty much dry. Now, that's a very too early stop for Karun Chandok, so I guess there's a problem with uh, Karun's car. That is uh, a great shame. That is a very big shame, because, yeah, it's you're right, the uh, pit window open is certainly not open yet, but Frank Kitty has clearly responded to the, the pace that was being set by Kent a few laps ago and uh, it certainly found a turn of, of pace. 126.6 is the fastest lap by Frank Kitty at the moment and the qualifying pace, the fastest lap which was set by the Dumas and Shepard car was a 124.2 so still a long way to go to posting super fast times but it is getting quicker and quicker by, by the minute. Yeah and you're watching the race leader now, Marino Frank Kitty and uh, brother of Dario Franchitti, a great experienced racer here at Goodwood. And he has opened up a bit more of a gap on this lap. In fact, that was another very, very good lap, a 126-1. He's got 8.7 seconds advantage over Richard Kent in second place. Third place at the moment, Bill Shepard with the Roman Dumas, who will be passing the Roman Dumas. It's good to see Karun back out. So Karun Chandon in this very special, unique, the only low drag designed lightweight Jaguar E-Type raced at Le Mans in 1964. It had an accident after that event, but early on in its career, sadly. And then it was restored more recently over three years. It took them three years to rebuild this car, five and a half thousand hours. And we've got this very unique E-Type, but Paul Caroon obviously uh, found a little bit of a problem. And uh, he's not going to get a, a competitive run at this time, I'm afraid. No, but uh, he'll still enjoy himself going around. It looks like Marino uh, certainly doing that out there, who will be in the new Ferrari film that's coming out. So not only what? doing some driving, but getting ever so sideways. He must know where he's on camera, surely, getting it ever so sideways, coming out of the final chicane. But still setting competitive lap time, even though he was getting all out of shape. But I love these onboards, Ben. You can really see how much effort has to go on behind the wheel and it's a fast track but it's also quite a narrow circuit here at Goodwood. It is, so let's watch him through the very fast Ford Water corner that's taken basically flat out in some cars although these are so powerful they maybe give a little lift down into Orson Mary's which is right and then a tighter left. Yeah and you can see really drifting it through the first part and drifting it I would say even more through the second part. He is in the lead, that car ahead will be the 
Westwood car, the number 80, I'm assuming, the Porsche 906 that he will be coming up onto the back of pretty sharpish. So already, this early on in the race, we are on lap nine at the moment. They'll be dealing with some traffic. So battle going on for eighth place now as well. Bobby Verdon row at the back of that uh, little group there as well. And uh, seventh place, in fact, could be what they're actually chasing because that's where the number 23 car is currently. The Ed Jones, Joe Twyman. Joe Twyman at the wheel at the moment, under the pressure as well from uh, Chris Baton. But there's Bobby Verdon row after that terrible start, really trying to move up in further in the top ten. Snake eyes have come a light, haven't they, Ben? And that usually means he means business. You mean business. You put the, you often see that in touring cars, don't you? There, flash of the lights. But I love that that uh, Vernon Rose decided. You know what? It's a cool livery already, is he? Oh, just in front, <laughs> riding slightly wide in the race of Neil Car. That allows Vernon Rose down the inside and oh. just in front. Oh, do they manage to go through without contact? Yes, they do. But the car in front, the Twyman Jones car, clips the barrier there at the chicane. So a great move from Vernon Rowe, capitalise on the mistake of the car in front. But I don't think the number 23 will have damage. That was a soft clip of the car. Oh, and that's Richard Mines, who has gone off from getting back on again, the number 22 Jaguar E-Type. So that's the car he's sharing with Rob Huff. And that's lost him a little bit more time. So that's going to be a tough one for them, even though the car started on the front row of this race. So let's have a, another little look at the car. Oh, that was a little bit of an error from, actually, it's Chris Payton who's in that number eight car. So Chris Payton, who, oh, yeah. And then there was the contact you mentioned. And they're side by side. So that's the second time on the other side now that Bobby's gone through at the chicane. Yeah, super aggressive stuff. And here was that. A slight mistake from the Mines Huff car running wide, but uh, it was just a small, and that is the problem out here. The times are so close, especially with this pack that we're looking at, that one very small mistake, and uh, the driver who's right behind you can easily capitalize, and the, the Verdon Row and Brundle car certainly did that. So Alex Brundle, always smiling, and have an even bigger smile on his face now at the pit wall. Definitely will. As we're looking a bit further down, we've got Michael Squire in another of the Sunbeam Tigers, Saif Hassan, uh, in the sort of lighter blue colored AC Cobra and the darker AC, that's Nicholas, Dit Nicholas Ditting, who's in that little group as well. They're a touch further down, but it's lovely to see so many different stunning machines as uh, some of the leaders are already beginning to lap slower cars, as we know. 42 minutes still to go. There is a 10 second penalty for number 78, but that's not going to make a huge difference because that car is currently in 13th position so uh, but a full start presumably in the wrong position on the grid um, we haven't got the pit lane open yet but it won't be too much longer uh, before they are going to start coming into the pits and some of the superstar drivers will be coming on track yeah, it gets very very busy it's a very narrow pit lane. Is that the 77 yeah. raising the hand pulling over that's a squad Turkington car so such a shame yeah, Michael Squire in the car at the moment, but as you say, Colin Turkington would have been out in that car later on. It's not going to happen, sadly. Colin's not going to get the chance. Um, and it's, a, it's an unusual car. Lovely to see it here at Goodwood this weekend, the Sunbeam Tiger. But unfortunately, that one's not going to make it to the end. We've got a couple in the race, so let's hope they can keep the other one going. Meanwhile, Bobby Verdon Rowe is still chasing after Joe Twyman as they head down into Woodcut Corner, the end of the long straight. It's clear that if you get offline, you could easily still get on a bit of dampness. Dry line is the main racing line, but if you get offline, it gets tricky, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. The snake is snaking all over the back of the number oh. 23. That is Brian Caldwell, number 72, who's gone off. He's down in 19th place. And now that he's in deep in the gravel, we may get a safety car. We may. He looks fairly beach. Is he? He's not trying to get it out. So I wonder if he's had an issue or a failure there, because you would think that he'd uh, try and get that car out of the gravel. Or maybe he just knows, do you know what? This gravel's so deep, I've got no chance. So let's have a little look. Oh. oh. There was contact with Costas Michael in the number 222. That's down at Levant Corner where you break quite hard going in. Yeah, you do. So tried to, to dive down the inside, put the hand out the window. So let's have a little look. We have, there we go, confirmation. 
Safety car is out, so that lovely lead that Frank Kitty had of 11.4 seconds is going to be heavily, <laughs> heavily reduced. This is going to make for an amazing race. It's also going to make for a very interesting pit stop time because we're not quite pit open yet, but very getting close to it now. So what it will do is basically bunch up the whole group before we get into the pit stop part. So we could get a complete shift in the uh, outcome of this race. You've got to do what you do. And I have to say, Marino's done a, a fabulous job. That start that he made and the way he dealt with tricky conditions because nobody knew how grippy it was. And several of the AC Cobras really struggled to get off the line at all. But Marino made it perfectly, didn't he? Yeah, he went flying off into the distance. And that could be hard with a lead car, especially when you've had no experience of driving in these conditions on that weekend. Obviously, many of the drivers would have sort of been around here in the members meeting. We had some slippy conditions then. But look on the windscreen there of Frank Kitty's car. It is starting to rain once again. So we thought it may have blown over, but it hasn't. But a great job by Marino because it can be hard when you're the first car coming in. Usually if you've got some cars in front, you judge how quickly to, to go through a corner and get a better idea of feeling the grip. But he's felt the grip extremely well. But uh, that gap that he had is uh, going to come down, unfortunately, for him. On the other hand, it does help them in a way that the safety car's already out when the rain starts to come down a bit more because it's so, it's so difficult when you're out there, starts to rain, to understand what the grip levels are. Um, you hear three windscreen wipers on the, on, the, <laughs> on the safety car. Isn't that lovely? On that beautiful E-type Jaguar. Um, but the other, the, the race cars are not showing any windscreen wipers in operation at the moment. And uh, Marino Franchitti having had a nearly 12 second advantage when this race does get underway, and of course they'll have to get that car out of the gravel, they're coming down to that section now, actually it's that Levant corner where uh, the car has gone off into the gravel, and it's going to take a few minutes, the marshals will be right up on the case, so sorting it out, getting it out of the way as soon as possible. Karun gets a little bit of a breather here, uh, gets some air, and that must be quite nice getting some air in to uh, just get a little bit of coolness perhaps. So he missed out obviously with that little mishap earlier on so Karun is further down the field than he wanted to be but that's the way it goes sometimes and uh, he's having a, as we mentioned earlier a bit of an up and down weekend he's right down towards the back of the the group at this stage and uh, that's uh, he had that stop as well um, the pit stop which uh, obviously has a mechanical issue but he's been running since then so hopefully they will be able to keep it going yeah hopefully they will he is uh, a lap down unfortunately so we can see even from Corun's point of view, the rain is certainly coming down. No one outside really on this front straight is putting any umbrellas, only a few dotted uh, around. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But yeah, that's a great shame for, for Corun. But he'll be happy that he's got a safety car. Hello, a little wave on the camera there. He's clearly can hear us all watching on the TV somewhere whilst going round. Yeah, I should imagine he's watching some of the big screens as he goes round. Uh, makes me think of uh, Sterling Moss winning here many many years ago while listening to the radio apparently in uh, in the car he was racing <laughs> he was as we heard from the duke of richmond one of the most successful drivers here at goodwood in his career so sadly of course for sterling his career ended here he didn't uh, thankfully, uh, he survived the accident he had, but it did prevent him from continuing his racing career, uh, the accident he had at uh, St. St. Mary's section. But um, we'll just have another little look at this crash. It was an unfortunate contact. I, I just think that uh, Costas Michael didn't realise that the AC was coming down the inside. He hadn't really looked at the right moment. It was quite a late lunge. Yeah, it was a bit, a bit of a late move, but a thumbs up that he's all OK. The marshals are, are, are down there, got him back in the car because they what they'll do, they'll they'll drag him out. You can see the marshals, it's a lot, very deep gravel, getting on their hands and knees, as always, getting stuck in. But again, a great job, as always, by the fantastic marshals that we have all around the country. And they're going to give us the car a, a big shove. You can see the tow, tow hook is all hooked up and that car will be dragged out and we should be racing I would say in the next lap or so. Yeah it's not damaged it's just purely the gravel trap that has uh, kept it out so Brian Caldwell has got the car back out of the gravel thanks to the marshals as you say doing their usual wonderful stuff and uh, hopefully we uh, they are continuing to tow it they're not releasing it so maybe they did have said no we're just going to get it out of the way now. Yeah the best thing I think will be to uh, pull it off somewhere you don't want to, to drag any gravel onto the, the, the track so you can hear the marshals uh, are being round of applauded by uh, the fantastic crowd that we've got here. And we're back on board now with Marino, who's got a good view of that lovely E-Type Jaguar safety car.
Yeah, that's right. And, and it won't take long now before the safety car disappears. I, I'm not sure it will be this lap. It's going to be a little bit close. Um, they may want him to stay out a little longer. Watch the lights on the safety car, the flashing yellow light at the top there. If that goes out, then we will go back to racing at the end of this lap. But you can also see on the left, as you come through on this onboard, that is where they are moving the car out of the way. I think it may just take one more lap. There you are. The marshal's getting the car out of the way. The rest of the field all running through. Um, I do notice that also, unfortunately, the Richard Mines, Rob Huffcar, is in the pits now. We did see Richard go off. Oh, the light is off. OK, so they're confident that the marshals have done it so quickly that uh, actually we can go back to racing when they come back to the line. So obviously it is Marino Franchitti who will set the pace as they come up through the chicane, but no overtaking allowed until you actually get to the start-finish line. Yeah, we have the number 80, uh, the Atwood car that has been lapped in amongst the field there. I'm not sure whereabouts it is. I think it looks like from the camera angle we saw around about fifth, sandwiched in between the fifth and sixth sort of place drivers. So uh, you obviously can't overtake before you get to the green flag. As Marino put his foot down, it sounds like it as he comes through the chicane. Have a look at the commentary box window. Gets ever so slightly wider. A bit of a wiggle on, but a great start. Marino Tranchini takes it off once again as the race gets underway. Under green flag, he's going to try and open up the gap that he had opened so beautifully well in the first part of the race until the safety car put them all back together and has made it a bit more of a challenge. Meanwhile, we've still got uh, good battles going on behind as Richard Kent is hoping to hold on to that second place, but whether he's going to be able to do that because the Shepherd Cobra is right behind the cut seven. Ex uh, Dick Prothero E type. And there's not much to choose between these. And the, the, as we heard, the E type is good in the damp conditions. That was a slide, wasn't it? That was a slide, slightly wide. It is a short run up to Levant Corner. And the Shepherd car is all over the back now. And is he going to go down the inside? It's slightly wide again from the E-type. And he's <laughs> snuck through. And gives a wave as he goes through as well. So there we are. Lovely move to get past. And that is up into his second place. So the car that started from pole position did not get off the line well. Has now moved up well. This is going to help Roman Dumas potentially because it will be handed over to him soon and we know uh, he has great talent and great success here at Goodwood. Meanwhile this is all quite tight too. Fred Waitman number 17 coming under some more pressure from Benoit Trilouille the number four has to clip the curve. Yeah he certainly does and just to let you know the pit window is open so we've seen Vernon Rowe has dived into the pit lane I'm presuming that will be for Alex Bundle to jump in so keep an eye now. Oh there we go right yeah. so the top three four maybe five cars are all dove into the pit lane so let's have a little look it's going to get busy Ben it is Ben Watrouille is now the, effectively the race leader so that's going to be interesting because he's done a very good first stint here anyway and uh, everybody else now swapping around so Ollie Bryant is going to take over from Marino Franchitti Ollie fully experienced very successful racer here uh, at Goodwood in all forms of historic racing all around the world to be honest Ollie is a, an extreme talent comes from a, a motor racing family and uh, there's Marino helping Ollie get into that car but you're also going to see the nine time Le Mans winner Tom Christensen about to come out on circuit as well in that beautiful number 17 Lister Jaguar the black car that has been going so well away they go then and uh, see how they gained or lost time that didn't make too much difference they've sort of come out in a similar style yeah they have but there's uh, a few positions have changed around there as Frank Kitty and Brian Carr has come out behind the Shepherd car. Ah, yeah. NASCAR. Good point, absolutely. So they have lost out on the... Yeah, the, you're right, sorry, the uh, Marina Franchini car, number one, definitely losing out there. Um, and although they're not leading the race up ahead of him because uh, we've still got some cars that haven't stopped, it's Benoit Trouillet who is leading it from Mike Whitaker, who hasn't come into the pits. But yes, that has not gone particularly well. I wonder why that pit stop ended up a little slow for Marino Franchitti. Well, I was having a look, and the mechanic was doing the tyre pressures. I didn't quite see whether they were being done on the Shepard Dumas car, uh, but they were certainly being done on the left-hand side, so that side that gets used the most, that will generate the more, most amount of temperature on, the, on that side. They were getting bled, so uh, just to release a little bit of air out, because the temperatures would have, have risen. So... Uh, 
I wonder if uh, that's more of a sort of a tactical thing, but we'll, we'll have a little look further on into the race. This is a key moment for Roman Dumas, who's been so close to winning this RACTT over the last two years, but it has gone wrong for him for various reasons. Now, he's effectively, of that lead group that came in together, he's now the front runner. But this is the actual leading car, Benoit Trelouille, in the Stingray, he is currently leading by over five seconds. He's got a good, good advantage. Um, he will be handing the car over. Remember, this car started way back down in 21st place, so it was a great effort. Now, you're on board with Ollie Bryant, who's taken over from Marino Franchini, and immediately he's trying to get that uh, second place of that group back past. So he manages to get past the E-Type. That's a good effort to do that. And he's got past Nicholas Minassian. Yeah, no. so he's feathered that through. He will know who he was racing up against, but looking on the timing screen, that's impressive. Dumas, first lap out there, purple in the first sector, even with a few spits of rain as well. Ollie Bryant just shows you uh, what a talent he is, though, going past someone of the abilities of Nicholas Benassian as well. Ollie can take on any of these superstar drivers in this historic brand of racing in this gorgeous number one. AC Cobra, this car raced at Goodwood all the way back in 1964, being driven by the great Roy Salvadori. It has also won this event uh, just a couple of years ago. They won the RAC TT back in 2021. So, but he's got a chase now because although Marino Franchini had the advantage, the pit stop did not work for them. This pass went pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Lights are blazed. I'm coming through nicely done. So now sights are set forward to the Damas and Shepard car. But we've seen it several times in many of the races here this weekend. Traffic can play a huge part, Ben. A huge part. So even though there's a slight gap and they're doing fairly similar times, that can still not mean anything with the traffic that they might face later on in the race. Actually, Roman Dumas has just done a really good lap there. And uh, partly because... Um, Bryant was having to get past. He lost a little bit of time. So Roman Dumas has just set the new fastest lap at a 124.1, showing us that the track has dried up again, despite that little bit of rain that we had during the safety car period. It's pretty much back to full dry now, isn't it? Yeah, and that is faster than the pole time that he set uh, earlier on in the weekend. So the cooler conditions as well, that will certainly help. But uh, track's looking pretty good at the moment. It is, yes. It's in good shape now. Uh, they've been quite fortunate. You never know, though. We might be getting more rain before the end of this race. Still uh, not the leader, though, because the official leader is this car of Benoit Trelouille that we're watching now. Due to come into the pits at some point, doesn't have to come in just yet. There is a restriction. You can only go so far into the race. Um, advantage of nine seconds over second place and some 16 seconds over third place. But then it's the gap to fourth that really matters because fourth place is the first of the cars, the earlier lead group that made the pit stop, that's Roman Dumas. The gap is 41 seconds at the moment. This is not like Formula One. You don't just lose 20 <laughs> seconds in the pit lane. <laughs> no, you don't. And Benoit was uh, having some, some great multitasking there. He stuck his hand out and tweaked the, the wing mirror. So uh, this is Curran that we're watching at the moment. And we can go back on board with him. It's actually Gary Pearson, yes, who's taken over, uh, I think, from Curran. I was... Uh, Hello, that still no, looks like Grunt Yeah, you're yeah, only right. They haven't made the pit stop yet, have they? So, yeah, still for the Phillips Crash Helmet design. I thought they might have stopped already, but not yet. So he stayed out a little bit longer. Yes, of course. I was looking at the screen, and of course, he came into the pits earlier, didn't he? Yeah, so he did. So that's why that car's already been into the pits. It hasn't been in for its driver change yet. No, as he goes through Woodcook Corner and comes down to the final chicane now. Pretty neat and tidy. There's a little bit at sea. Someone else has clipped the barrier there. So is he coming into the pits now? Looks like he is, Ben. So you predicted it. Here's the here's the pit stop change. So Corinne now coming in, leaving it a little bit uh, later for the changeover. Let's see how this goes. If they can keep it nice and controlled. Rapid, getting the harness off, leaping out. Never an easy thing to do. No. <laughs> Looks quite a comfy seat, though. Oh, oh, we've got to change where the belts are and then hopefully make it all work. And, uh, the easiest car by the looks of it to get in and out of, must be said. Gary Pearson now 
getting himself strapped in. Needs a bit of help though, because that yeah, that left hand shoulder, he's sitting on it. But that's that's the thing. Ever, uh, I've been asked several times, like, why can you not strap yourself in with a helmet on and a hands device? He's not got a full cl closed helmet there, so it's a little bit easier. But it's so hard to see your belts. It's so hard to look down and, and see where you've got to clip everything in. So that's why you have the assist as a uh, one oh. of the scrutineers is pointing to something that's not properly done. Is it going to be that maybe what that strap on that right hand shoulder was over the hands device? So the strap's got to be over the hands device before you go out. So there's a little bit of damage that's been done to the barrier. Bit off putting. Let's see what actually caused it, which car it was that touched that level. There already was some damage. But uh, I think it's the number 13, it's yeah. And Johnson car. And uh, is that who's that behind the wheel? Couldn't see if it was Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, it's or Jimmy Sean. Johnson now, I think, because they've made their pit stop. So Jimmy Johnson behind the wheel. But it was already slightly damaged, wasn't it? It had already got a bit jagged. And then he just sort of took the, <laughs> scraped another level off. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, we can just about see it from our commentary box window. If it gets any worse, maybe, maybe they'll feel that they need to, to bring out the safety car to, to make a change. But we've got the number 18 rain. car now, just come in the pits. More rain again. So watch out. There could be incidents here. Uh, Ollie Bryant is trying to make up more ground as well. Marino Franchitti was in this car just a little while ago and was leading the race, but the pit stop didn't seem to go quite according to plan. Let's hear from Marino. Marino, what an amazing first stint you had. It was, uh, it was all a bit of a blur at the beginning. I seem to get a good launch compared to people around me. It was a tiny rub with another car, and I didn't realise how wet it was after the first corner. So after the first corner, I thought I had a puncture, it was just no grip. But it, it was just so damp and, and slippy. So after a couple of laps, felt it started to dry and it was okay. The car is just wonderful. That was like my fifth lap in the car was the star. So still learning. We had the uh, stopwatch come off. So we had the stopwatch come off when we came in the pits, which was a shame, so we kind of lost a little bit of time. But Ollie's fantastic, so I'm sure he'll get back up the front. And your, your pit stop seemed to be a little bit slower than others. Well, did anything go wrong? We just had to be careful because we had the timer in the car and it fell off when I pressed it into the footwell and it stopped when it hit the floor. So we didn't know really how long. So we just had to gauge ourselves off the Dumac car. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Oh, my goodness, look what's going on. This rain has made a huge effect on everybody. And there's Ollie Bryant, who's gone off and come back on again, just being passed by Tom Christensen. And he got away, at least didn't hit the barrier. But we've got several cars. Safety car is back out. I'm surprised it's taken a little while, but it's come out now. And the safety car is out. We've seen a couple of cars badly, badly damaged, including the Bizzarini. Uh That has hit the wall very, very hard. Now, hands up from Ollie Bryant. Oh, that was a difficult situation. We could see that rain coming down much more heavily than we did earlier. And suddenly the place got very slippy. Yeah, it's super, super slippy out there. Hopefully everyone is all all right. You can see the safety car is picking up the cars now. But that is heart and mouth stuff for the Frankitti and Bryant car. And you could see from the onboard that the rain is really lashing down. The wipers are going full flow on the safety car. So that is that is frustrating for Ollie Bryant. But he's are so powerful, Ben. It's so tricky. And with these these tyres, they use the same tyres in the wet and the dry. And looks like the number 13 car, yeah. the Jimmy Johnson car there, has, uh, has touched the wall at some point too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, and it's the Alex Buncombe AC Cobra that was off as well. So that's had a, a nasty... There's the Alex Buncombe car. Um, he's uh, taken a, a big hit into the tyre barrier, but then just a moment or two later... Go. Look, comes the number three. Oh. And you can see front wheels are all locked up. And that means he is hard on the brake, desperately trying to get the car stopped. But then you're a real passenger, and Alex Buncombe do, Buncombe do some great... Uh, job of trying to jump over the, the barrier there, and this here was, we go. Yeah, this was Ollie Bryant. We had the onboard camera with him as this was going on. He was a bit more fortunate in a way in that where he went off, you could see the rain falling, he's into the gravel trap, and actually he kept it going through the gravel in a straight line, so he's been able to get back on. But what, I, what I'm struck by, Alice, is the fact that two of the best Goodwood drivers, Alex Buncombe, we saw him leading a race by miles, well not miles, but a long way earlier this weekend. Andrew Jordan, who's taken victory in the Porsche 911s yesterday, 
they both got caught out in the rain and I'm not surprised because it's so difficult when you get those sort of conditions. It is and they've just jumped back into uh, to the car as well so they've not had a taste of the, the conditions at the start of the race but they, it's a lot different now I mean there's a lot more standing water that's that's come down but uh, the one thing I think that saved the saved Ollie Bryant was there was gravel there we don't have that down at no. turn one I can guarantee you that if there was no gravel where he went off he would have been sailing on into the barrier which is unfortunately what happened to to the Jordan car who was locked up but he was just going to be a passenger because they're so slippy on the grass there was no way of him stopping so uh, a real great shame for those two drivers yeah but such difficult conditions to deal with and in such powerful cars that uh, when the brakes lock up, very difficult. You're going at a very high speed, very difficult to control. So we are fully under safety car right now. Um, the leader of the race is still Benoit Trelouillet, who has not yet made a pit stop. The pit window is still open. So I wonder if this is going to be a little bit of an opportunity for them to... It's a difficult one because, of course, it has closed up the whole the whole group but on the other hand uh, coming in and using the uh, they still have to stick to a certain time in the pit lane but they won't lose so much ground but i think ultimately it won't put him into the battle up front that, that'll be a different story it'll be those who who stopped earlier on and it means that uh, roman dumas is still going to be in uh, top form ollie bryant who had that off he didn't lose too many places as a result of that so he could still be in the battle and uh, just ahead of him tom christensen just going past the truck there that has come down to do some of the pickups may have to make its way quite a long way around the uh, circuit to help out. Uh, but we, so it could be a little bit of a safety car period before we see them back to racing again. Yeah, there was heavy damage, wasn't there, to the, the tyre barrier. So I think a lot of repair work will need to be done uh, to, to the tyre barrier there. But the marshals will do, as always, a great job and a speedy job to try and repair that. So we'll have a little look. There you go, the left-hand side of your screen in the background, that heavy impact. And then the number three comes sliding in. And look, he's just hit the barrier. And uh, that's a lot of damage to the tyre barrier. But... Everyone is OK, everyone's out, out of the car, and then another replay, of course, of the Brian off. Yeah, I was just thinking about Andrew Jordan. He, he was telling me earlier, his company, they've just finished rebuilding that Bizzarini. It's only recently been, been fully done by the company that, that he and his family built up uh, to restore cars. They do a fantastic job, but it must be so painful to him. Uh, yeah to have had an accident like that. Oh, we have a red flag. We have a red flag. So the, uh, they are going to have to come around and come to a complete stop. And that doesn't actually surprise us because the damage to the tyre barrier will take a little while to sort out. And, of course, they're trying to get those cars out of the way as well. So red flag race is being halted for now. Yeah. Campsite is still full, still busy, but I can hear engines are being fired up now and people are clearing the grid as quickly as possible. The safety car lights are on, so we'll be getting underway, I think, in the next uh, 10 to 30 seconds. We will, yes. It won't take long now before they, they head off. Uh, behind the safety car and then of course the safety car lights will be on and uh, I think it'll be interesting to see if they I think they'll do a one hole lap presumably behind the safety car we've got a yellow flag is that somebody not firing up yeah Benoit ah. de is not the engine is not firing up I think he's got a problem they are the marshals warning everyone else that there could be a stationary car in front of them when they get underway that's why they're waiting yeah that's the message oh. drivers will understand what what she means keep out of the way this car are oh. yeah it's is it I don't think it's fired up yet they are actually about to set them off although we've still got the yellow flag waving now the safety car is being released there apparently is again some rain falling at the back and it's fired up good it took a little while to get it started but it is underway Benoit Trulia has got the car running. We did say that overheating is always a, an aspect if you had to stop these cars when they've been out there racing. Hopefully, we won't have any overheating problems. Most of them are getting underway. Just a few more down towards the back. Being given the signal, take it easy. And yes, this all seems to be going OK now. But more rain, as a gather, could be falling down the far end of the track, down at Levant. Wow, contrast to what we've had over the weekend. It was scorching yesterday. Lovely blue sky. And looking out now, it is certainly 
darker yeah. skies than we've seen. And yet, there we go. The rain is falling. Wipers are in being put to the test. Alex Brundle has certainly got his going and getting the tail of the snake out as well. Yeah, Ollie Bryant on board with Ollie once again. And I tell you, he's a potential winner of this race. He's going to be right up front. But rain's falling. Ice cream is still the thing to help yeah. you cool down. If Ed's not doing anything, maybe he can bring some ice creams up to the commentary <laughs> box, maybe. I think he's pretty busy already. <laughs> so uh, there we are on board with Tom Christensen. And look at that heavy rain. It's, it, this is actually, this is going back to where we were, which caused the red flags to a certain extent, because we had heavy rain come down and it sourced a couple of cars have some nasty accidents down at the Madwick corner. We've just had the track cleaned up, the tyre barrier repaired, and now the rain's coming down again. Yeah, and I can see as well, brollies are going out up, sorry, on this front straight as well. So it's spreading over the circuit, and that's going to make it tricky. But they will be starting single file behind the safety car. And of course, you can't make any moves until you have crossed the, the green flag, the start finish line. But it's going to be tricky watching them come out this final corner. Cause we, we saw earlier on board with Karun, even in the, the much sort of drier conditions, it was still a little bit damp. He was snaking all the way up. Well, not all the way up the straight, but up to, I would say, the pit entry. And there we go. Confirmation. The puddles there not lying, are they? But the rain is falling. Yeah, and it's full. Oh, and there goes Benoit, who's going to be starting from pole position. Look at that. He's gone straight into the gravel trap. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. He is, he is. He's got the drive going, thankfully. Gets a big round of applause from everybody down there at uh, Levant. I can see them all uh, congratulating him for getting back out of the gravel. And well done, but easily done. And that's the corner that we were talking about, where the heavy rain came first. Oh, yeah, he just gets the slight bit of oversteer on the way in, tries to correct it, but there's just not enough room there. Of course, people say, well, you're not allowed to overtake it under safety car conditions, but you can't if a car has gone that far off, off the road. So, Ben, this is going to be hard for, for the drivers, all of the drivers, but especially the, the drivers at the front. Safety car lights are out, because if you're the lead car coming round, you're the first to experience the conditions. Yeah, and Benoit Trulia has not been able to get back into his pole position uh, area. So what it means is uh, good news for Roman Dumas, number 47, who uh, will take the restart. The RAC team gets on the way once again, and it's Roman Dumas slipping and sliding around, but look behind Tom Christensen is chasing after him, and We've got a great battle all the way through the field. Ollie Bryant also getting off very well in the number one, AC Cobra. Nicholas Minassia taking things a little more steady. There is Alex Brundle. All of them getting a feel for how much grip. Look how slippy slidey it is as they try and accelerate out of Madwick. Dumas was snaking all the way up this pitch straight as down the inside goes the Oliver Bryant car. He is now up into second place. Yeah, that was lovely. Ollie Bryant's going for it in the AC Cobra versus another Cobra up ahead. And it's Roman Dumas that he is battling with. Dumas has the line as they go into St. Mary's. Sometimes, though, an outside line gives you more grip. Look at the steering efforts. Oh, the outside line was great. And has he got to hold on to it? He may do. Try not to go too deep. Oh, he's done it. He's in front. Just about holds it. Yeah, that traditional karting style in the wet line, wasn't it? Round the outside. So we'll have a look how far Dumas is. But it's still raining. Wipers are still going as he holds the inside there at Levant. Yeah, everybody being super cautious because that's where Trulliwe went off on the safety car lap. And we've got all oh, the, yeah, just running a little bit Jimmy wide. Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. He was saying his uh, first experience of driving a car like this, a 1960s car of any sort in this conditions uh, and he had a slight off but he gathered it back so here we go Roman Dubas coming back again trying to retake that place from Ollie Bryant stunning stuff but Ollie Bryant in the number one Cobra has got the advantage at this stage they're still learning where is the grip where is it really slippery watch out so easy to make a mistake it's so easy but Dumas now can see the rear of the number one car, Ollie Bryant, and he can get a taster. And there is the indicator on to the number four car, who actually, he's come quite a way back up, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done quite well, but of course he's due a pin stop, isn't he? So yeah. Benoit Trulia is coming in now to hand over to Nick Jarvis. This, this was the lead car before we went into that red flag situation, although we always thought he would be under threat. And this, of course, will drop that car right down the field. Now, Tom Christensen's lost a bit of time there, 
Um, he's lost a few places on that lap in the fact in the number 17 black Lister, and he is now going to try and get it back again. The Lister Jaguar Coupe, and right behind Alex Brundle, number 94. He's now chasing his way through. He said he's done a few laps in the past in the wet. The windscreen wipers are all working. Some of those windscreens are steaming up. You were pointing out the way that Tom Bissonson's car, they were clearing it on the grid to try and prevent steaming up. Yeah, there's one one mechanic putting Rain-X on the front, which basically beads the rain off the front of the windscreen. Another one inside putting some anti-fog in as uh, Alex Brundle is uh, snaking all over the road. Does he keep it on the road just about, getting it ever so sideways? But they're doing 205s, 206s out there now, and they were in the 124, so that just shows how tricky these conditions are. That's Andy Prio in the, the dark red E-type, so he's actually up there quite well, but he's battling with Nicholas Minassian. Minassian has just gone back past him. When they went over the line, um, uh, Minassian was ahead, then Prio got past him, and Minassian now retakes that spot once again. Meanwhile, Gordon Shedden's in that group as well, just up ahead of Alex Brundle. A couple of cars ahead. He's actually in front of Christensen. So, yeah, keep an eye on Gordon Shedden. He's now trying to move his Cobra up the order. There's back with Alex Brundle. We're looking at Alex from the back of Tom Christensen's car. This is all pretty tight, pretty close. Everyone trying just to vote. Oh, a dim lines. Alex keeping in a straight line just about does. We'll just say everyone's trying a variety of mine, desperately trying to find grip on the track. And they've had no experience. I thought Alex was going to go into the pits there, but no, he's uh, keeping it on the right-hand side there. Probably feels that that is the best way to avoid it sort of tailing down the straight. But uh, good save there from Alex Brundle. It uh, certainly is. Nigel Greensall's in that uh, little battle as well in the car taken over from Mike Whitaker. As uh, further down, we've got a car that struggled earlier on and they had some problems, so it's a, it's a little bit further for Gary Pearson to try and come back up the order. But uh, yeah, we've got Trelouillet's uh, car in the pits. More side by side racing going on here as well. The 23 car on the outside with Ed Jones in that car now. Oh, big, big slide from Matt Neal. Matt Neal is driving the number eight car. But through goes uh, Gary Pearson. We were riding on board with him a second ago, and Gary has at least got past. But this is quite a long way down the list. Meanwhile, back up nearer the front, Andy Prio on the outside, Nicholas Minassia on the out, uh, sorry, on the outside. He's in the number 88. Andy Prio in the number 78. The dark red, the burgundy-coloured car. They're still racing side by side. They are, and all the drivers, weren't they, before the start of the race, were saying, well, if you're in an E-type Jag, that is better if it rains. And Prio, wow, he is setting the, the timing screen alight, setting purple sectors all around. So keep an eye on him. He is around about 4.9 seconds off the lead, but setting good pace. So this is, you've got, you're looking actually there at second, third, and fourth. There's the leader, so Ollie Bryant is still the leader. Second, Roman Dumas, number 47. Third place, Nicholas Minassia. Then Andy Prio. What an experienced group of professional drivers, but will you consider what it must feel for Ollie Bryant to be ahead of such a group? And here, there's a real chance for Minassia. Number 88, he gets past Roman Dumas. We were hearing that the e tide could work well in the wet, and it is. It certainly is, and Dumas, look at him. Heart over halfway down the straight, and he's still got the car moving underneath him on the power. Great stuff oh, for us. Minassia. On slightly wide. No, they just managed to keep it on track, but Prio's all over the back now of the number 88. Yeah, Andy Prio, such a great... Oh, we've, oh no, that's Tom Christensen, so he's had it off. That's unusual. You don't see that very often. But uh, maybe an error in the rain. There's our race leader coming through. Second place now, number 88, Nicholas Minassia. Under pressure from the multi-multi touring car champion, Andy Prio. Let's just have another look at uh, what was going on. This was on board with Tom Christensen. And the back end got away, thankfully. Oh, it was down at yep. that area, the Magwick, that we saw the accidents earlier. Yeah, so he just about manages to stop there. Thank you to the tarmac. But back to the action. Andy Prio having a sneaky look down the inside, using a little bit of curve. Is he able to do it? No. But uh, the E-types are catching the AC Cobra. As we were told, in the wet conditions, the independent rear suspension, better drive 
off the corners and the sheer horsepower of the AC Cobra, normally in a straight line, has the advantage, but it's proving difficult. And Ollie Bryant's now having to defend the lead in the RAC TT. Still 12 and a half minutes to go. Tricky times. The track will start, hopefully, to give them a little bit more grip as we go through. But who knows how this is going to work. Andy Priya, look how close these three are. They're almost touching. They are, they are almost touching. They were doing the two minute four seconds. They're now into the 159s, 156s from Rio. So the lead car, Brian, will be hoping, hoping, hoping that it continues to dry at a quick rate, which will really help the AC, AC Cobra. But of course, these E type Jacks will be hoping that the total opposite of Brio has another little look down the inside of the Manassi car. Yeah, it doesn't quite work for him, but you're looking at how close the top three are now. You're riding on board. Oh, the touch, touch! Oh, my goodness, that wasn't planned. That was just, uh, and I'm sure that he'll actually apologise for that. It was unfortunate. You don't expect to have to lift, do you, in that situation? Wow. That's so lucky that the 88 didn't go into the barrier, but, of course... Andy Prio would, like you said, be very apologetic because he didn't mean to. He's having, he was having a look one way, having a look another way. And uh, it was just really, really unfortunate. Now, as they go through the first part of St. Mary's, a little bit of uh, bodywork rub damage there from the contact. So we're going to have a little bit of a replay now. So you'll see Prio have a look on the inside. That gap closes. And then just yeah. as he tries to switch to go the opposite side, they meet effectively in the middle. And wow. It's that is lucky. Minassian got a bit sideways, so he actually lost a bit of speed by going sideways, and Andy couldn't really back off in time. Oh, and he's taken the lead. Andy Prio has got past. He's got past Oli Bryant, who's in second place, although that second place might not last long either, because Nicholas Minassian's right behind him. Well, Andy Prio is driving absolutely superbly in this Jaguar E-Type. They knew in the dry conditions that the AC Cobras would have the advantage with that straight line speed. But in the wet conditions, the Jaguar E-types are flying along now. And Andy Prio has done an absolutely superb job. But what about Minassia? Can he find a way through? Well, he's having a look, isn't he? He's uh, keeping himself nice and tidy through the chicane. He'll know that Cobra will be squirming coming down the straight. Has, of course, the straight line speed advantage, as you can see from the onboard but then he just continues to squirm all the way down the straight but uh, Manassian isn't going to have a chance to go down the inside there at Madrid's corner at turn one but he's got even closer on the exit and uh, Andy Prio coming up to some traffic but that's not going to bother him he is really stretched over the gap 1.5 second lead now very, very impressive from Andy Prio. You're riding back on board with Gary Pearson for the moment. This is a bit further on down the order, but they, uh, they have made up a bit of ground after the problems that they had earlier on with this car, but still uh, further down the list than they would have liked. Uh, Alex Brundle still going well. Still the fight for second place is going on. The Ollie Bryant trying to hold off Nicholas Minassia. Minassia now on a different line through St Mary's. Can he get alongside? Drifting, sliding. But so far, Ollie's doing just enough. Yeah, just enough. He's getting super close. You don't want to make try and make any contact. We still have over eight minutes, just under nine minutes left of these race. He's going to go round the outside. Has he got it, Ben? I think he has. He had a really good exit there. And now being on the outside, you look at the way that Ollie, he's trying to get the power down, but just sideways, sideways. And he has to lift off. And the E-types are now running one and two ahead of the AC Cobras. They are. And uh, that's great move and brave stuff there. Manassi has got a bit of a gap to close down to Prio. So here's the, the overtake for the lead that we just missed out. Prio has a little look down the inside. He gets it stopped great moves and then it was of course Bryant knew that unfortunately the E-type was going to sail through and then on the opposite side came Manassian he went round the outside very brave stuff because that door can quickly close but respectful racing between these drivers absolutely and maybe sometimes in the in when he got wet like this there's a bit more grip on the outside there's Andy Prio then and Nicholas Manassian now up into second place E-types one and two AC Cobra Ollie Bryant in third he's doing a great job you just see the power in that car, how it 
it spins its rear wheels in virtually every gear. Frio doing a lovely bit of control there himself. As we look back a little bit further down the order now, the uh, the racing going on. This is down for 13th, 14th places, and uh, it's all pretty tight down here, isn't it? Yeah, it was very tight. There's some great battles going on further down the Fio field, should I say. Sorry, but uh, the times are fairly close uh, at the front of the field as well. And up on the timing screen, we've got pit stop infringements under investigation. We don't know what those are at the moment, so those could uh, change the order as well. Oh, that's a good point. OK, so we'll keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, this is the race for fourth position so there's been a bit of a switch around here because uh, Roman Dumas who's still racing the number 47 car look how much it slips and slides around he's under pressure from Gordon Shedden the touring multi-touring car champion right behind him and they're both just trying to understand the balance of these cars in a wet it is not at all easy no it's not and you can see they're squirming for grip uh, wife are still going flat out on the Dumas car. I think the rain has stopped ever so slightly. But look, just the control that he's having to put in behind the wheel there. And that's usually a, a flat out easy corner up the Levant straight down into Woodcut. But it's not in a cover in wet conditions. It, it turns the straight into a completely different experience. Look how much steering work he's having to do. It's just crazy. Now, this is Tom Ingram. And uh, that is a move that uh, Tom has just made on Alex Brundle for seventh place and remember Craig Davis was telling us he thought Tom might well be able to make up some places has to break a bit earlier there so Brundle gets a little closer on exit it puts the power down quite well though he's got a nice bit of oversteer controls it and has the advantage into the chicane not much to choose between them yeah, so the Chevrolet Corvette Stingray, they're being a little bit more comfortable than the, the Cobra as they steam down the straight now. An 18th place did the Inger and Davies car start, so they've made uh, some good progress up into seventh now. Well, there is the number one car, Holly Bryant, still in third place now. Nick Jarvis is now in the number four car well down the order the rain coming down heavier and heavier once more jimmy johnson running in 10th place in the number 13 car a bit of damage done earlier it doesn't actually damage the suspension look at the control he still has and there's tom christensen he's down in 11th place now we saw a rare error from tom when he spun down at magic and now they're having a, another little tussle watching this <laughs> control is a real element of all it's just fantastic isn't it i'm chuckling away to myself not laughing and then just with excitement as uh dumas is constantly trying to make adjustments this is a real workout for him and being chased down by gordon shedden who has that slight damage to the rear of the car that was from earlier on in the weekend that corner i think they would normally be taking that maybe second or third it sounded like he was almost taking a fourth gear just to keep the revs as low as possible to avoid the wheel spin yeah they'll be short shifting down the straight and out of the corners as well and you can even see from this shot here how much the car is is moving and uh, he's down on the brakes, and obviously that's not going to help with more rain falling as well. Uh, on the circuit, you can see just about there as uh, Gordon Shedden goes down, tries a slightly different line, hooking it over the curve, and I think that worked pretty well. Just over four minutes to go. These two are running in fourth and fifth places, these two AC Cobras that are balancing just in the rain here with this rain still falling. The top three at the moment still, Andy Prio, Nicholas Minassian, and Oli Bryant. The gaps between them are opening up a little bit. I have to say, Andy Prio, there you are, looking at your race leader. He now has a 5.7 second advantage, but the rain falling even more. And I tell you what, this could easily change. You want, you just take one little tiny mistake and it could change the order. It could, but it's not slowing Prio down. He's just set the fastest lap uh, of, well, not of the race so far, but in this second part of the race, a 155.2, with uh, Manassian doing a 155. 57.3, so the gap at the front now is 5.7 seconds. As again, we uh, continue to see the battle of the Cobras slightly further down the field resume. A shedder desperately trying to get past, and you can tell he's a touring car driver. He's uh, 
using the curve and much more on the inside there. A man who uh, works with his family at Knock Hill and knows exactly how to uh, get the best out of a car in wet conditions. He might not have driven the... I don't know how much he's driven the Cobra in the wet. I'm sure he's driven it. But he's certainly used to the rain growing up in Scotland and uh, spending so much of his time at Knock Hill. Um, and they, the family run that uh, the track. So it's great to watch him, but he still hasn't quite found a way past, has he? No, he hasn't. Dumas, a very experienced driver, of course, as well. We've got some great drivers on the grid. We saw them earlier on, didn't we, yesterday, taking part in the St. Mary's Trophy Part 1. Part 2 coming up later on in the day as wipers are still ablaze. And there's a lot. It really has come down. There's a lot more spray compared to how there was a couple of laps ago. Oh, there's a chance for Gordon Shen to get up the inside. Doesn't quite work for him. Roman Dumas just fends him off once again. Porsche, a factory driver for so many years. Twice winner for Le Mans, once with Audi, once with Porsche. And he's just holding on, holding on to fourth place from Gordon Shen, but not by very much. Uh, and I can't believe how they wheel spin halfway down the straight. It's amazing. Yeah, they're putting on a right dance down the straight, are they? It's Gordon trying to sell the dummy on Dumas. No, he's too experienced for that as well. It's Dumas. And then Gordon clips the inside curve. He's trying the tie to line, gets ever so sideways. But he's gonna be, it's going to be difficult for him because it's even tighter. And with that power, he is unable to get the car pointing in the right direction, in the ideal direction. Just look at them. <laughs> Snaking. And four waters, usually a, a flat-out corner. Uh, maybe not so much for, for these more powerful cars. They have a slight lift, but they're having to have a break and even use the, the, the grass and the curve on the inside there. As through St. Mary's, uh, they go now, but back with... Frio, who really has sailed on into the distance, 6.7 seconds the gap now. Yeah, he's doing a wonderful job here, Andy Frio. He's got a 6.7 seconds in the last job with Nicholas Manassi, as you say, and uh, he's very, very comfortable, and we're under a minute, so he will get one more lap when he comes over the line. Uh, we're not quite on the last lap. He's got to deal with back markers now as well. There's a bit of a flap of something underneath the car. I don't think that's a, a big issue, though. Car is running smoothly at this stage, but he's still got to get into the end. Well, what a great effort this has been by Andy Prio. He really enjoyed driving this uh, Jaguar E-Type. There is the man running in third place. Ollie Bryant sharing it with Marino Franchitti, who did such a strong part in the first section of this race. And then when the rain fell, it all started to get a little bit more of a challenge for them. I have to say, still the, firm, the uh, top Cobra, the top AC Cobra in the race. But the Cobras, as we have seen, are not easy. And let's hope we stay on board with him down this straight and just look at uh, how he's having to sort of fight the wheel, even though he is going in a straight line. He's not holding the wheel straight because he physically can't with all that power underneath him it's just scrabbling for grip and uh, it's a real workout driving these cars without water on the track as you can see all the way around Madwick's Ben he's pretty much sideways wonderful let's just listen in listen in coming up to what a corner that is often flat out not quite in these cars He's being cautious, he gets, still gets over, look at that, big snap. Now listen in to, listen in to St Mary's. I think he is spending most of this lap sideways at the moment. The majority of the time he's spending it more sideways than he is going straight. And this is, again, really see a great onboard, some great cameras that we've got in these cars. And you can see the understeer there whacking the lock on to try and get some grip in the front end. And they're using the gears as well, using the throttle, all aids he's trying to use to, to try and keep the car on the track. Uh, he's not going to be able at all, unfortunately, to catch the cars in front, and the, the Dumas gap is not opening. But it's Andy Prio who's done a brilliant job. Yeah, Andy Prio on his final lap in total command of the R80 TT here at Goodwood. He has done a fantastic job, there's no doubt about it. Uh, he's raced here at Goodwood for many years. And he's got a tremendous background in motorsport. Andy Prio takes victory in the RAC TT in truly difficult conditions in the stunning Jaguar E-Type.
Well done to Andy, the three-time World Touring Car Champion plus the European Touring Car Champion in 2004. A man who went on to race very competitively at Le Mans after his touring car days. He has taken a key victory at Goodwood. There's the battle for fourth place, and in the end, it is Romain Dumas who still just fell, fends off Gordon Shedden.